we're supposed to do it, Dad. They want us to do it. This I don't way. know that way. Why would they change math? Uh, math is math. Okay, math Dad. is math. I'll just wait for Mom to get back. What? Habitats were introduced all the way back in the Utopia expansion, and while they were tweaked and updated over the six years since they were released, with 3.9 Kalem, we have been brought a full rework to Habitats. This rework has borderline completely changed how Habitats function and should be used. With that, I'll be doing a quick overview of how Habitats work, as it has substantially changed before I can go over some strategies and how to utilize them. Habitats now come in two parts, the Habitat Central Complex and Orbitals. The Central Complex when created functions as an artificial planet and you are limited to one per star system. And it can only be built over stars and planets. Building one will cost 200 influence and 1500 alloys with a 6 month time period to build. Once completed, the habitat needs to be colonized, but it does take half the time to colonize a habitat as it takes to colonize a planet. All habitats you build will be a size 6 planet with 8 districts, but the total possible districts are not limited to this. Districts on habitats function differently than planets. City or in this case habitation districts and industry districts are only capped by the overall district cap. This brings me to the second part of habitats. Orbitals. Orbitals come in two sizes, major and minor. Major orbitals cost 200 alloys and take two years to build, and are built over stars and planets, while minors cost 50 alloys and take half a year to build, and are built over moons and asteroids. Orbitals provide districts according to the deposits on the object that they are built. Both major and minor orbitals provide a flat three additional districts of the type of resource they are built on. This means that if you build a minor orbital over an asteroid with a plus one mineral deposit, you will gain three mining districts. And at the same time, if you build a major orbital over a molten world with a plus six mineral deposit, you will also gain three mineral districts. It stays a flat plus three districts of that type per deposit and ignores the size as well as if it is a major or minor orbital. All of the other benefits orbitals give are affected by the habitat's level, so bear with me a little bit. I should also mention that the wiki is actually wrong when it comes to minor orbitals, and this is pretty clear when you observe them in game. At level 1, the habitat complex has a habitability of 40. It has a max branch office building count of 1 and major orbitals provide an additional 0.5 max total districts, and both major and minor orbitals provide an additional 0.5 building slots. At level 2, the expanded habitat complex has a habitability of 50, it has a max branch office building count of 2, major orbitals provide an additional 0.75 max total districts, and both major and minor orbitals provide 0.75 building slots. At the final level, level 3, the advanced habitat complex has a habitability of 60, it has a max branch office building count of 3, major orbitals increase the total district count by one whole district, and both major and minor orbitals produce an additional one building slot. If you noticed, minor and major orbitals provide identical bonuses other than the max total districts, all while major orbitals take four times as long to build and are four times as expensive. This means that you should always build minor orbitals unless you are either near the total district cap or the only deposit of the district type you need is on a planet or star. Also remember that the total deposit count is much more important than the total production from all of the deposits. A system with a single plus six energy district deposit is terrible for energy production, while a system with four plus one energy deposits is absolutely fantastic. If you want to know more about what planets and stars produce, I have a full guide to every planet, star, and asteroid and what they produce, and I suggest you take a look at that as they are vastly more important with how these new habitats function. In general, the more stars in a system, the better it is for research and energy, and systems with asteroid belts are great for mining. It should also be noted that orbitals built over strategic resources simply collect those resources, 
as a planetary feature and provide the same bonuses as a planet that has no deposit. Something not to be overlooked is the fact that habitats now function very differently defense-wise. The fortress habitat was a community favorite, and while it isn't dead, it is on life support. The problem is how orbitals function when attacked. When an orbital drops to 5% hull points, it is disabled and causes a 10% devastation to the habitat it's connected to, and a blocker is added to that habitat, which upon removal repairs that specific orbital. The blocker produced by a minor orbital being ruined is a negative 5% to habitability, and if it is a major, it reduces habitability by 5% as well, but it also decreases the district cap by 0.5%. This means that your fortresses won't get destroyed as the building slots are unaffected, but fleets can quickly increase devastation with your armies having no power to stop them. You can also only build one habitat per system, so mass fortress habitat spam is no longer possible. This does mean that fortress habitats still work, but are much weaker, while ironically this also makes them even more important for void dwellers. See, something rather overlooked is while habitat fortresses are weaker because it is easier to damage habitats from fleets, this also makes hit and run tactics great against habitat heavy empires. For maximum damage, simply run in, kill as many orbitals as possible, retreat, and repeat. The only way to stop this is with FTL inhibitors at choke points using either star bases or fortresses. Fortresses are better than star bases in this way, as they are harder to defeat with just a fleet, even with these new habitats. So yes, fortress habitats are weaker, but for the same reasons, that makes them more crucial than ever. Luckily, since habitats now leave ruins when cracked, it is easier to gain back territory lost to world crackers, making them more resilient than planets in that one specific respect. These new habitats also make planet management and game performance vastly better, as since they slightly decrease the spam from AI when you take over their empires, you don't have as many plans to deal with, and additionally there are less planets generated, lowering the amount of processes needed to be done on your computer. One large benefit is since it piles multiple old habitats into one big one, resource bonus producing buildings like energy nexes provide a much bigger bonus for the same cost since you build less of them to cover the same amount of districts that you had to cross multiple habitats. This however is a double-edged sword since for the exact same reasons those buildings are more beneficial, it also heavily hurts your pop production, an arguably much more important part of your economy. With all of that being said, the optimal strategy largely has remained the same. You should produce just enough of every resource to cover the costs except for alloys, and you should then spam habitats and orbitals as much as possible. Since industrial districts are by far the easiest district to get now, this is very easy to do. Prioritize defense, but frankly with such a large and easy alloy source, you should try to vassalize as many empires as possible with the massive fleets you should be able to build. Just watch your energy credits as it is decently difficult to get a good energy habitat. There are a couple of other niches and strategies now open, especially with robots since they don't need food, arguably the hardest resource to produce on habitats, and they also don't need consumer goods letting you maximize your alloy production. Remember that energy is still not exactly easy to get, which could hurt this strategy. A lot of these new strategies could be a video in their own right, so that's where I'm going to end this one off. If you have any questions or ideas, drop them down below, and remember to hit all of the buttons that you're constantly asked to hit.